Hey everybody, Caden here from TechTuts.com. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to deploy an Express server or an Express API to the internet and make it publicly available with AWS Lambda. Now, I know that seems complicated or it may seem like a lot, but I promise it's not, guys. Uh, we will knock this out fairly easy and fairly quickly. So let's dive in. Now, the two things that you need before we get started here is an AWS developer account, which you can make for free online. I'm not going to cover that here. And also, Node.js installed on your machine, which I have a video for that, which I'll link in the description if you need to know how to do that. I'm not going to cover that here either. Just going to stick to the topic at hand. Okay, so here we are in our project. It's a very basic, probably the most basic API you can imagine. First in our package, we just have Express.js. That's our only dependency right now. And over here in our server file, we just, you know, declare, bring in Express, declare the application, declare the port. We have a very basic health route that's returning a 200 and an OK status and tells you how long the API has been up and running. And of course, we're listening on that port. Okay, so now if we come down here and just do node server.js, just run this server. We'll see it's running on localhost 3000. Uh, we're going to get a cannot get. Let me zoom in a little bit. Cannot get uh, because we don't have a blank route. We need that dash health. And when we do dash health, we're going to get status OK, uptime 12 seconds or however long it's been up. And of course, if we refresh, we're going to get that updated runtime. OK, so there you have it. The world's most basic uh, express application, right? Now, how are we going to get this from our local machine to where I have to have this window open or else the code is not running anymore? How do we get it from there to the Internet so where another application or another person can just hit a URL and run this API? Well, with AWS Lambda, they make that pretty easy. But there's one thing I want to note before we go any further. We're ha we have a server right here, which means it's running all the time. And AWS Lambda, that workflow, it's serverless, meaning the code only runs when you hit it. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of this video of why that could be good for you or why that could be bad for you. I'm just going to show you how to get how to get it done, right? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to make our Express application serverless. So what we're going to do is stop that running, clear that off. We're going to install serverless HTTP. That's it. That's the only package we need. Okay, that's installed successfully, and we can verify by going to our package file and see that we have the serverless HTTP package in our dependencies. Okay, so since AWS is going to give us a public-facing URL, we don't really have to worry about the port. We don't really have to worry about it listening. Okay, so get rid of that, and now we're just left with this. Now, how are we going to make this into a serverless function? Very easy. We're going to bring in serverless. That's going to require the serverless HTTP, pack, HTTP package and then all we got to do is grab this serverless function that we have available now and say module dot exports dot handler equals serverless and we're going to wrap the app all right so there we have it okay so now that we've got the code squared away now we need to go over to AWS now I'm in my developer account here and I've actually logged in and I'm inside AWS Lambda what you're seeing here is my existing functions that I use for my other projects. What we need is this create function button. Now we're going to leave everything from scratch except the name. I'm going to name it the exact same thing uh, that my local application is named, my Express API. We're going to, like I said, everything default. Node.js 22, x86 architecture, everything default. Click create function. It may take just a moment. Okay guys, so once AWS has created our function, you will land on a page that looks something like this. Let me get rid of this notification. Now I know there's a lot on this screen and I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because we only need to pay attention to a couple of things here. Now a quick overview before we do anything, we're going to import our code, we're going to make sure that the index file is our server file, and we're going to make sure that we have that public URL. It's actually a fairly easy process. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is upload our files to Amazon. Now it offers us two ways to do this. It's a zip folder or an S3 location. Now for us to keep it simple and quick, we're of course going to do the zip folder. Now our code is just in a standard folder. It's not compressed into a zip file anywhere. So just to do this quickly, I'm going to open up my finder here. I'm going to highlight all these files. I'm going to compress this. It's going to put it into a zip folder. It's going to call it something by default. I don't even care about changing that default zip folder name because all we need to do now is go back to Amazon, click upload from zip folder, click upload, click that zip folder it just created. 
it's going to take a second to go on there click save and you'll get a notification that it's done now what you'll notice is that this index file that was opened by default is now broken and that's what I mentioned in step two about making sure our server file is our server file so what do I mean by that this is broken because by default AWS is looking for index.mjs what we need to do is go down here to the runtime settings click edit and this is going to be index.handler right here on the handler option ours is called server Whatever your file is called, if it's not called server, it needs to be the same here. Now, dot handler, that's what AWS is going to use, so don't change that part. Now, once this is done, this is going to open up, uh, the error is going to be gone, and now we can open up our server, and we have exactly what we had uh, in our local. So now we've got our code in AWS. It is searching for the right server file. Now we need that public URL, right? So I will state that there is a whole test flow you can do and it's super useful and super nice, but we're not going to cover that here. Just know that if you want to test your code inside of AWS, there are plenty of ways to do that right on this test tab. Where we need to go though is that public URL option and that's going to be under configuration. Now under configuration and the option menu on the left, you're going to see function URL in the sidebar. So click that, click create function URL. Um, I'm not going to cover this, but it's going to ask you for auth type. You can set up auth through IAM, uh, which is probably recommended, but for today, we're going to have this publicly facing, meaning that nobody needs any security for it. You can just hit the URL and get the data. We're going to click none. What that's going to do is add a public access policy to our Lambda. Long story short, this is just making it to where we don't need any authentication to hit this API. We click save. It's going to take a second to deploy, and then it's going to spit out a function URL right here. Now, if we click this, we should get the same thing we got earlier in our local machine. So as you can notice, we have that same cannot get because we don't have the slash health, but this is actually on a publicly available URL that anybody can hit. So if we just do dash health, we can now see that we get what we had earlier. The status okay, the uptime running, uh, everything looks exactly like it should. Now right here, you're probably asking yourself, how is this uptime still showing you know, accurately? And that's because even though AWS is a serverless workflow, meaning that the code in there won't always be running, it is currently keeping this container warm. Uh, after a certain amount of time though, the container will go down, it will shut down, and it will not be running until it's called again. And at that time, this uptime will reset to zero. So although right now it is seeming to keep up with the uptime like a standard server would, at, cert at a certain point it won't. So just be aware that that uptime metric will eventually go back down to zero. Alrighty, so that's about it. Let's recap. Today we took an express application. We made that a serverless express application. We put that into an AWS Lambda. And then we made that Lambda's code publicly available with a function URL. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something in today's video. I hope you followed along and got some uh, useful information for you. And of course, if there's anything that I glanced over or mentioned that you want me to cover in more detail or dive deeper into, please leave me a comment. I do read and respond to all comments. And as always, guys, I appreciate you for sticking around. Subscribe for more content. Until next time, peace.